Hello and welcome to my show, Who's the Savage Now? Channel, I guess. Station? I don't know what I don't know what you call it. It's on Blog Talk. It's on Blog Talk, Ron Blog Talk, blogtalkradio.com. Big fan of the Blog Talk Radio platform. And uh, we're just coming back on and off. It's like an old relationship you can't get rid of. You can't kick. Like an old addiction. You just can't kick it, man. Keep coming back to the Blog Talk Radio family. It's like a, like a, the step family. The Blog Talk Radio step family. I'm a Blog Talk Radio stepchild. Redheaded Blog Talk Radio stepchild. Keeps leaving and coming back. Leaving and coming back. <clears throat> Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Sit back, relax. Listen to me rant and rave for the next mm, 60 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of the show. In any form or fashion you deem necessary and appropriate, it's good to be back. Stay tuned for more. Greetings all on this Saturday morning, January, January something, four or five, January, January 5th, the 5th of January, 2018. It's the day after Jerry Quickly's final show. Very exciting. I'm MZ. This is Who's the Savage Now? Coming to you live and direct from the poor man's beachfront condo here on the edge of a continent. Uh, right on the edge, not far from the megapolis known as Los Angeles, California. In an undisclosed seaside city, still. Previously undisclosed seaside city. Now every, a lot of people know it as Santa Monica, California. Just north of Venice. A lot of people know Venice. Uh, I used to love Venice myself uh, until uh, people started uh, getting shot and murdered down there uh, on a regular basis by cops, by security guards. by. And so <clears throat> I moved just a little north uh, where it's just a little quieter, a little cleaner. And uh, although things are improving down there, I, I guess, I don't know. The homeless population is exploding all over but you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that from listening to Jerry Quickly show. You wouldn't know anything about the homeless population in Los Angeles from listening to Jerry Quickly show. Or what? Name one show on uh, KPFK where you could learn about the homeless population. Name one show I'm, that I'm unaware of. I'm not aware of all the shows. I don't know. But I, I listen to Drive Time. I listen in the morning. Those are the popular times. And give me one show. I'm just starting to have a lot of doubts about KPFK. I'm just starting to scratch my head every time I look in, look deeper into something like Jerry Quickly. Jerry Quickly, I've been listening to Jerry Quickly since 2008, and bef even before that, before he left the, uh, the first time. I uh, was a big fan of Jerry's, and uh, then, 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 then he came back a couple of years ago, and I uh, was happy to hear him back, happy to have him back. And then July 10th, 2017, remember, I remember it like uh, my birthday, I heard him hang up, abuse a caller, hang up on a caller that was trying to correct him about a point that, was, that he was clearly wrong on. I, I made a video about it. It's documented in my first uh, Jerry Quickly loudmouth bully video. Um, and from that point, I said, I'm getting given up on this guy. Gave up, didn't listen for a year, got bored with the, the, the internet news hooligans on the internet, came back to Jerry, gave him another chance. He was, he was doing the same thing, didn't miss a beat after 12 months, not listening to him, just screaming at the callers, abusing them, not answering their questions, refusing to answer their questions, conflating, obfuscating his ass off <sighs> about everything. So I started, I said, yeah, no, okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I went away from the station. I came back looking for things to, to be better. Change. No, it wasn't, it was still the same sad, sorry state of journalism with Jerry. And uh, so I started making videos about it. And uh, here we are now, December 30, uh, January 4th, yesterday, January 5th today, Saturday, the gloomy gray Saturday, I may, add, I may add, here in Los Angeles, California, on the edge of a continent. Um, here we are. Jerry Quickly has now been fired uh, from KPFK, uh, according to the rumor mill, according to a caller that I heard uh, mention it. And, uh, but uh, that's not what we get from Jerry. That's not what we get from Jerry. That's, we get a whole different version of events from Jerry. Because he spins stuff. He can't, he can't face the truth, even when he's faced with the truth. He can't look himself in the mirror. I don't think he does. I don't think he does very often, judging by his, 
appearance on his videos. I don't think he really looks in the mirror very much. But um, <clears throat> when it comes to truth, he's he is uh, it's it, he's has an aversion aversion to truth and uh, to real conversation, which is real funny. So it's so funny to hear Greg Pallast come on, who who has uh, I guess a, a reputation as a journalist, investigative journalist. I always thought that was the case, but now now seeing him grovel with Jerry in the sandbox like he's Jerry's big brother uh, or even his father. Jerry's big brother, or his father, coming to the school to talk to the principal because Jerry's been acting up in class. It's 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 sad. It's sad. It's really pathetic. I, I I don't enjoy watching it. I don't enjoy watching it at all. But this really shows me the character of Jerry, uh, what kind of character he has, um, and it's not looking good for Jerry. It's in my opinion, it just it's really sad to see him go out like this, um, just lying his ass off up until the, the day that he, he walks out of that station for the last time, you know, just lies, lies upon lies upon lies, saying that uh, it's a money issue. It's a Greg, Greg, I don't know who, but I forget who brought it up first, but Greg uh, said it's a lack of resources and it takes a full team. We don't understand how many people it takes to put on the Jerry Quickly show. What? It, it's Jerry and an engineer. <laughs> Who else is working on the show? What do they got? A legal team? Scholars in residence? What? What? What do they got? What do they got? It's Jerry and an engineer. They're saying it's a lack of resources. Well, what? Or it's a money issue. It's a money issue. Uh, let's listen. Let's listen to them. It's a money issue. Well, what? We're paying him too much? You mean that kind of a money issue? We're paying Jerry too much? That, that would be my first guess. Or he's not making enough, or they don't have enough to support the... What? It just doesn't ring true. It doesn't ring true. And here, he, here Greg Pallast is putting his reputation on the line, in my opinion, to support Jerry, who uh, is, is, you know, he's been caught with his pants down, quite frankly, abusing callers, lying and not correcting himself on air, and inciting violence. Okay, all of which I've documented on YouTube, in my YouTube videos, at Who's the Savage Now? Direct evidence, direct evidence of Jerry abusing uh, callers that call in, not willing to have an honest discussion about the questions they ask, uh, lying and not correcting himself, and inciting violence on the air and denying it. All Jerry, all Jerry denies, 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 denies. This is his show motto: lie, deny, and leave him one to wonder why. And here comes Greg. Here comes Greg Pallast. Okay, these these two guys are like the tag team WWE tag team of public radio. I, I'm, I'm starting to, to to understand. I'm getting the feeling that these guys are just like some some rogue tag team public radio, you know, s pseudo celebrities. All right. And yeah, Greg Palace did some great work in in, in, in uh, with Kemp and uh, voter suppression and all that stuff. Yeah, but that's what they do. That's what these guys do. They latch. They bring you something real juicy, real honest, real true, and then the and then that's it. That's it. That's all. They give you that, and then the rest of it is complete BS. And I'm starting to feel that way about Greg Pallast, who, who has his own investi Pallast Investigative Fund. Found I didn't catch the name. Is Pallast Investigative Foundation or something like that. Oh, yeah, we know, where, we know where things end up at the foundation, okay? The Clinton found Clinton's got themselves a foundation, too. And so does Donald Trump. Everybody's into the foundation thing, man. Get you a little foundation for yourself. Get you, get your money. Get you get an income stream coming in. Who's good? Nobody's going to pay attention. No one's gonna, it's going to be years before they you catch up to you. Let's listen to a little bit of audio from yesterday's show. And by the way, uh, everyone, listen up. This is a big honor for me. Jerry has asked me. Sorry for the dogs barking. Need to join him on this. This is the final concluding grand finale of This Is Happening. This is your last show, guys, uh, that you'll be hearing, Jerry, at least for now. What's, uh, just so you know, it's been a two, wonderful two-year run. I've been so honored to be a guest again and again on this show, doing investigative reporting, telling the truth, um, staying a few feet back when Jerry goes into a rant, and getting information you just don't get anywhere. And by the way, Getting information, yeah, like uh, Russia Gate, like Russia, 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 Russia. Let's hear some of Jerry's. Let's hear some of Jerry's. Uh, yeah, let's hear some of Jerry's excellent reporting. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. 
Ecuadorian consulate in London with Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. That's right. <whistles> Bing bong. Is this mic on? Paul Manafort had secret meetings with Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Now, not only did Paul Manafort have these secret meetings with Julian Assange, the Ecuadorian intel agency has uh, has remarked and listed that there were Russians involved in two of the... As a result, hired Paul Manafort, and in March of 2016, just prior to Manafort coming on, and by I say just prior, I literally mean days or a couple of weeks prior to Manafort's involvement with the Trump campaign, Paul Manafort flew to London and had a private meeting with Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. So there it is. It's all being laid out. Manafort was the contact for WikiLeaks. And maybe, you know, maybe they went through Roger Stone. Maybe they didn't. But this is it. It has been revealed. Okay? The okay, there was Jerry on a little Russia rant, which he does often. Often. And notice how many, notice uh, when he talks about Russia, uh, how many times he uses the, the, the words should, could, would, maybe, might be, uh... We don't know. We're not sure yet. You know, they're not sure because it's not news. It's conjecture. Okay, it's 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 speculation. It's speculation journalism. And it it it, 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 it you know it sinks to it's not, at certain points it sinks down to the level of gossip. It's bare, it's little more than gossip. And Chris Hedges will back me up on this. In many interviews, Chris Hedges calls it the exact same thing, this whole Russia uh, hysteria. It's gossip. Noam Chomsky as well. Glenn Greenwald as well. True progressive voices, which KPF claims to be a progressive voice, True, but, but th that's not what we get on many of their shows. We don't get a progressive perspective. We don't get a perspective that challenges mainstream media. We get an echo of the mainstream media. And, and Jerry is a per example, exhibit A, of MSNBC echo, MSNBC echo regarding Russia. And he spends a lot of uh, minutes on the air, a lot of time, man, a lot of airtime dedicated to Trump Russia hysteria. Okay, and that's exactly what it is, hysteria. And he claims that Donald Trump is... Uh, is get gonna oh you know, he could get us into a war. Well, this is called red baiting. You're trying to get everybody worked up against Russia, Jerry, uh, by doing this type of uh, reporting. You're trying to get you're trying to reinstate the Cold War, where we see Russia as our enemy uh, again for some reason. That's just that's just as dangerous or more dangerous than what you accused Trump of doing. Okay, and it's backed up. Uh, by Chris Hedges, Noam Chomsky, Glenn Greenwald, true progressive voices. But Jerry, he, he interviewed Chris, but he didn't dare bring up this. He didn't dare bring up this nonsense. Just for an, a comparison, compare and contrast, compare and contrast Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow, the top, top dog at, uh, one of the top dogs at MSNBC, which these guys, the, uh, Jerry and Ian Masters and Tom, and Tom Hartman seem to be so fond of. Uh, MSNBC. Uh, they seem to be so fond of this this network, Jerry. That's all. That's all he plays. MSNBC clips, not to refute them, but to support them, to echo them. Let's listen to a little bit of Rachel Maddow Russia coverage and compare and contrast it with Jerry's Jerry's coverage. Here we go. Our usual groove of expecting more breaking and developing news over the course of the evening. That's in part because of a big story that was broken late tonight by the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and this story, here's the headline. Um, this story that the Wall Street Journal has broken tonight is something that all the legal experts are now telling us we should have probably expected. Maybe that's true. Maybe we all just should have guessed that this was coming or that this had been happening behind the scenes, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> for, for those of us who have been watching this presidency of late and who have been watching the scandal that envelops this presidency more and more on a daily basis, this news tonight broken by the Wall Street Journal, it does feel like a surprise. Right, you see the, see the headline there, it goes right to the heart of the matter, Manafort sought deal in next trial. That means Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort sought a deal with Robert Mueller 
with the prosecutors at the special counsel's office who are about to bring him, who are about to put him on trial for another round of felony charges in federal court. But quote, talks broke down. To understand why, at least to the non-lawyers among us, this is such a jarring headline tonight. You just, just stand back for a second and, and look at the big picture in terms of the legal trouble and the legal investigations that are circling this president and his family and his business and his charity and his campaign right now. Right? The biggest news of the past week was, of course, the president's longtime lawyer pleading guilty on eight federal felony charges in his plea out loud in court and in the criminal information that was filed by prosecutors in conjunction with his guilty plea. Okay, sorry for the uh, canine interference there. We've got a security team working the perimeter, securing the perimeter of the studio of the poor man's beachfront condo. And uh, they alert me when there's danger approaching, which is often, quite often. Uh, so I played, those, I played a little bit of Jerry and a little bit of Rachel Maddow just ranting, ranting on Trump. Not, not, del not delivering news, not giving you news. They're just giving you speculative news. It's speculative. It's all, it's 99.9% .9 speculation about what's going to happen, what might happen, what could happen, what people say might happen, what other people think might happen. And it's all, it's all, it's not, it's not journalism. It's not journalism. It's, it's red baiting, uh, what they used to call red baiting. Uh, red meaning Russia, and trying to get people to be fearful of Russia, trying to get people scared of Russia. That's what Rachel's doing, and that's what Jerry's doing. And I, I guess if uh, it, when G Greg Palast uh, says that Jerry's doing good reporting, I, I just have a hard time uh, really understanding, wrapping my head around what, 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 what he's talking about and uh, why he would choose to stick up for Jerry Quickly as a journalist. Uh, yeah, it, it really doesn't reflect well on Greg, uh, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Imho. So let's go back to listen to Jerry's show last night. Let's listen to this. Let's listen to Greg drivel on about how great Jerry is. This is a, this is a low point in KPFK history. KPFK history for me. And I got to tell you, the station at this moment does not have the resources to continue. And what? The station does not have the resources to continue. What does that mean? Can you can you flesh that out for us a little bit? Greg, investigative journalist, Greg Palast, what are you telling us exactly? What are you telling us? Because it doesn't sound like the real story to me, buddy. What do you what do you are you sure you investigated this story, Greg? Huh? These guys couldn't couldn't investigate their way out of a paper fucking bag. If this is if they expect us to believe this fucking bowl of shit. Take the say, take it over to SoundCloud, take it over to YouTube, Greg. He doesn't even know that Jerry has a SoundCloud account apparently. He can't figure out what the uh, the handles are for the SoundCloud, the Twitter. Greg doesn't seem to be too up on social media. How do you how you get to social media? And look and check out yeah go go check out his fucking YouTube page. He doesn't even he's not even posting the shows anymore. You can't even this show's not even there. It, it, uh, the last show is December eighteenth. He's not even putting it up there. And before I started making videos last summer around June or July, he had less than two hundred followers on SoundCloud uh, on YouTube. Less than 200. He's got about 300 now. I think he's about to double it. But he's got, he's got under 200 followers on SoundCloud. And that SoundCloud account's been up there for at least two years. Under 200 followers, Greg. This message isn't resonating with people of L.A., man. This Russiagate stuff is not resonating. Yeah, he can get four or 500 people listening on, on a drive time uh, on KPFK, drive time it for an hour. He can get, you know, four or 500 people calling in or listening and then get, you know, 20 or 30 people calling in. Only an infinitesimal uh, percent of the people that call into the sh that listen to the show actually call into the show. The, the, the stats are, in, uh, the statistic is infinitesimal. Okay, it's like 0.011 or something of the people that listen to the show actually call in. 
So a lot more people listen to the show than are calling in. But still, you know, um, what was my point? What was my point? Oh, the, 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 Greg's trying to sell us, uh, sell us on this idea that Jerry's a, 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 <laughs> a real journalist because he went to Iraq. Because he went to Iraq. Okay, good on him. He went to Iraq. But what did he do? Where's where where's this ex? I can't find any reporting. I, I can't. I looked a little bit. I, I don't find. I can't find any of his reports. He, uh, from all accounts, it looked like he went over there to make a documentary movie, B-Boy, called B-Boy in Iraq. What? He, what is he, the B-Boy? Uh, uh, he was going to do a uh, Iraq documentary from a hip-hop perspective. <laughs> what? 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 Again, he's trying to self-promote. He's trying to climb up on the heap, the heap, dung heap of uh, military-industrial complex in, to, to promote himself. That's what it looks like to me. I, I can't find any of his reporting on Iraq. His excellent reporting on Iraq. Oh, God. On the air first as a podcast within a week or two. So make sure you go to Jerry's Twitter account, which is at Jerry Quickly. Is that correct? Uh, my Twitter account. Is, is that correct? Is that your Twitter account? I don't, like, you don't know his Twitter account? You didn't, you didn't write this down on a little note card so you could have, you know? What a, what, what, a, what a hell of a report. What a crack journalist you are, man. You can't, write, you can't write information down on a note card so you can have it at your fingertips when you're on a radio program? You've got to stop the whole freaking show and ask Jerry what his Twitter handle is? It's just a clown show. It's a fucking clown show. Uh... Uh, Greg Pallast, he's the only guy standing up for Jerry at the station that I see. Greg Pallast, the only guy. And he's not even a member of the station. He's a frequent guest on the station. He's a longtime listener to the station. He's a member of the station. But he's not a, he's not a programmer at KPFK. And he's the only guy standing up uh, for Jerry quickly, being fired. Name one other programmer standing up or speaking up in support of Jerry quickly. Name one. Name one. Please. Tell me that name. Nobody. There's nobody standing up for Jerry. And, but nobody will speak up against Jerry. Nobody. Nobody. I, I've noticed that, too. Nobody's going to speak up against him, but nobody's speaking up for him either, except Greg. Greg's willing to smear himself. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, that's, that's where we are right now. Let's listen to some more of this crap. And again... I'm not doing this to be mean. I'm not doing this to be vindictive. I'm not doing this to be, you know, it doesn't give me joy to do this. It does, well, it does a little bit. I got to be honest. It does, it, it is, uh, you know, it is, you know, I've been doing this, making videos about Jerry for six months since July. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it is, but it, but it's, it's, it shouldn't, I shouldn't have to make videos like this. I shouldn't have to call KPFK out for their host's behavior. This should be, this should be station, the station manager should be doing this. The general manager should be, this should be their job. This is their, uh, who's, you know, who, who, that, this is their job, not my job. I'm a poet. I'm an artist. I just put up a song, Just Another Young Man, on my Who's the Savage Now? Check it out. Recorded a couple of decades ago. Um, yeah, I want to just, I just want to make music and play guitar at, on, at the beach, man. And, but, but I can't because my favorite station that I've been listening to for a couple of decades is, is, is putting people on like Jerry quickly and it's pissing me off. And yeah, I, I did, I just stopped listening for a while. And then when I started listening again, it was the same crap. So I started making videos. So that's where we're at. So that's, so this is my, hopefully my last video, last rant about Jerry because he's gone. He's gone. There's nothing more to say, but I just wanted to, 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 to expose the, the low level of uh, journalism, the low level, uh, the low quality level of this last show and Greg Palace trying to put a happy face on, on a, you know, trying to put lipstick on a pig. Is at Jerry, at Jerry Quickly, and you're going to hear Jerry again uh, on sound takes two of them to get the Twitter handle right. Two, it takes two investigative journalists to get the Twitter handle correctly broadcast out over the air. Okay, what's that tell you? Cloud.com, this is happening, which is actually T-I. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> live. Man, he, whoa. 
how does he fucking get up and tie his shoes in the morning? <laughs> you you know, you know, think he said, hey, Jerry, before the show, he would have got up to Jerry and said, hey, Jerry, uh, what's, your, what's your Twitter handle? Okay, write that down. What's your, and your SoundCloud, we want to get that out there. Okay, I'm going to write that down. And uh, what's your uh, YouTube handle? Okay, I'm going to write that down. No, no, just show up. Like, we'll wing it, man. We'll, we'll wing it. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll hash it out over the air. We'll take time out of the show to, 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 to figure out what your fucking social media handles are. Oh, God. Hey, soundcloud.com slash TIH live and all the podcasts are up right. there. And we're going to be uh, bringing new... There's another lie. All the podcasts are not up there. there he start, the, the last one is December 18th or something. There's no shows for January up there, and the and and yesterday's show in the archives is listed as special programming. <laughs> the fucking liars. Material and on YouTube on the Jerry Quickly YouTube channel. Jerry is not dissolving. He is not going away. He's not. Yes, he is. He's going away. He's going away, folks. Going to heaven yet? Besides, he doesn't know anyone there. <laughs> All my friends are in hell. But I, I really want to say that this has been. A hell of a two years. I've been loving listening to this program. I hope you have too. I hope you will keep. Some- did you like the uh, incitements to violence, Greg? Did you uh, did you like those? Is that was that one of your favorite parts? That uh, you can I can send you a clip of the video that I made about it. I found four examples, just you know, just <laughs> randomly. Okay, just uh, amateur doing my amateur thing. I found four examples of Jerry inciting violence on the air. What do you what do you make of that, Greg? Do you support that? Huh? I can't hear you. What? Supporting Jerry Quickly and his work. It's going to be a big loss to KPFK, the Pacifica Network, and to the people of Los Angeles, but we want to... No, it's not. It's not a big loss. It's a gain. It's a gain for the station. It's a gain for the people of L.A., and it's a gain for Pacifica. He wasn't fulfilling the Pacifica mission, Greg, okay? He wasn't fulfilling the Pacifica mission, all right? Celebrate Jerry quickly today. So again, this is Greg Palace, and you're listening. Celebrate Jerry quickly. Yeah, let's celebrate Jerry quickly. Let's have a Jerry quickly day. To the finale, the last rodeo, the final of this extraordinary two-year experiment in in astonishing journalism and conversation. And and by the way, Jerry, let me, let me tell you, you never get in. Uh, two-year experiment in 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 in, in red baiting, in red baiting. The Russiagate story in, 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 in echoing the MSNBC storyline, okay? The, the, what does it say on the KPFK website, Greg? Challenging corporate media perspectives. Challenging corporate media perspectives. Have you read the, the, have you seen the website lately, Greg? Because that's what it says up in the right-hand corner, a little paragraph there that says we're, KPFK is a progressive media outlet challenging corporate media perspectives well that's not what jerry does okay he supports and echoes msnbc and cnn perspectives he magnifies them what they don't get enough airtime at cnn they don't have enough money they don't get enough play at the airports Throughout the, the United States, and why is CNN always on it when you go to an airport? Hmm? Look into that. They don't get enough airtime. They got to clog up. We got to listen to this crap on our local public community radio, too. Get out of town, man. Get out of town. Go, Jerry, Jerry go, go apply over at MSNBC. That's what Ian Masters wants to do. Ian Masters thinks MSNBC is a good. It does good journalism. Can you believe that? Ian Masters is uh, a longtime host at KPFK. Uh, I've been listening to him as long as I've been listening to Jerry uh, for a long, long time. Uh, I was addicted to Ian Masters. I still am in a lot of ways. At 5 o'clock, man, I go to KPFK, put on that radio, but over the last year, I've just been real disappointed with Ian Masters and his cover, coverage of Russia and it's how it's indistinguishable from the MSNBC coverage of Russia, his denial of 911 truth, uh, and his denial of geoengineering. He calls them conspiracy theories. And, 
has he heard of the architects and engineers for uh, tr 911 Truth? Has he heard of that movement? These guys aren't quacks, man. They're not d people off the street. These are scientists and engineers around the world, over 3,000 of them, who are demanding an explanation into 911. But here's Ian dismissing it all as a conspiracy theory, um, as well as geoengineering. Man, just look up. You see the planes and the trails behind them. And meanwhile, at LAX, right down here, I see the planes. I can see the planes from Lot 5 South. Nothing coming out of there because the engines are high turbo, high bypass turbo fan engines, high turbo bypass fan, something like that. They don't produce condensation anymore, except in the rarest of circumstances. Okay, I'm way off topic. I was talking about Ian Masters admiring the journalism that they do at MSNBC and, uh, and how that's contrary to, well, you can admire the journalism they do, but they don't do journalism over there. That's my point. I played Rachel Maddow earlier. That's not journalism. That's speculation. That's gossip. That's borderline gossip what they're doing about the Trump-Russia story. Borderline gossip. Meanwhile, it's sucking all the oxygen out of the news day. And we can't have a discussion about anything else except Trump. And this just came out. A guy from, MS, a guy from NBC just wrote a letter the other day. I don't have it with me. Wrote a letter, a big memo. Boy, I love those bikes with the uh, gas-powered motors on them. I love those things. Those are so awesome. Except for the noise and the pollution they leave behind. Um, and the speed, high speeds that they travel to, travel around on, in the, on the bike path, creating a, uh, hazards for everyone, kids and animals and everything else down there. But uh, other than that, they're really cool. Dig them. Here he comes again. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Hey folks, this is this is radio at the poor man's beachfront condo. This is the type of people that these are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. My favorite, one of my fa top five favorite visitors to the lot down here. Oh God, this guy's not going to go away. Oh, is a guy. He brings down his little gas-powered model car with remote controlled gas powered model car and drives it around the parking lot down here. He's a grown man. He brings down his little model car. He's like, he doesn't get enough driving. He doesn't, he's not satisfied with the, the, the torturous driving that you have to put up with here in LA just to get down to the beach. The, the, the torture uh, obstacle course that it is just to get down to the beach. He wants to bring his little toy car down to the beach and drive it around in the parking lot. I'm way off topic here. I'm way off topic. From MSNBC, but at least on MSNBC they do practice journalism, and I think it's important that you have pointed that out. There you go. Ian Masters ad admires the journalism that they do over at MSNBC. Meanwhile, a guy just came out, uh, I forget his name, a guy, a longtime reporter for N NBC, and said that uh, he's no, he can no longer work there because of the alignment with MSNBC, NBC, with the, the military-industrial complex, always ginning up for war. There's no, no war they don't like or support, okay? And he just uh, and says some other stuff, too, but he just he can't do it anymore. And uh, so he quit. He quit. He quit. He wanted to do news, but they didn't want to do news at uh, MSNBC. So why did they fire Phil Donahue? Why doesn't Phil Donahue have a show on there anymore? Because he spoke up about the Iraq war. Th that, is that good journalism, Ian? Firing Phil Donahue because he was against the Iraq war? <clears throat> well, he turned out to be right. Did he get his show back? No. And why did they fire Ed Schultz? Because he wanted to cover Bernie Sanders, but they didn't want him to cover Bernie Sanders. They wanted him to cover Trump. Trump's an empty podium. Is that, is that good journalism, Ian? Is that an example? And why did they fire Dylan Radigan? That why did they fire Dylan Radigan when he tried to do good journalism and, and speak out against the uh, military industrial complex that this guy recently just quit over? So Ian, he's got it completely twisted. And he should go work for MSNBC. He's a good fit. He's a good fit at MSNBC, but just not at KPFK. He's, uh, he's just, you know, he doesn't, 
He doesn't pre prevent, present a progressive perspective challenging corporate uh, media perspectives. He does, that's not Ian Masters. He's not, he, he's, I mean, am I the only one that sees that? And that's, Jerry wasn't either. Jerry wasn't upholding the mission of the station, the mission of the Pacifica. Am I the only one that sees this? this th these guys are just running, you know, what are they, the coyotes running the hen house? Here? I wanted to play, since we're on to 9 I mentioned 911. I wanted to play some couple of clips uh, from Tom Hartman. Just a couple of little blurbs that I caught him saying and uh, that, 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 you know, that caught my eye, caught my attention because I'm like, wait a minute, this is KPFK progressive challenging corporate media perspectives. Why is he saying this? Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, I've been having a lot of problems with the Tom Hartman program. Um, the way he talks about climate change, um, just sort of like skirting completely around the direct, it, direct discussion of it and sort of like talking about the academics of it all. Uh, and he just sort of skirts around that whole discussion. And he's a 911 support, uh, official government story, official government version supporter of the 911 story, okay? And uh, just from little things that he says. And he's, uh, he's down with the Trump Russia Gate propaganda. So, and here's an example of that. What? What, what source is that uh, from, Tom? Can you quote a source on that? Or is that just conjecture, speculative conjecture, uh, hysterical speculative conjecture on your part? Fitting it in there right at the last, this last part of the show when that music starts coming up. Get out of here with that music. Who, who, who's, who pushes the button on that music? Who pushes the button on that music? sort of diminishing what the person is be is what is being said by the person and then what the person's is supposed to stop talking or what what do the show does that starts the music in like okay now it's time we got to go to a break that's that's real professional tom that's real professional that's real re real respectful of your guests who take time out of their day to come down to your program or pick up the phone and call you to talk to you and you got to start you got to Instead of saying, okay, we got to go to a break, you got to start playing. Okay, I'm way off topic with Tom Hartman. Don't... And then here he is talking about 911 and why we got the reason 911 happened. Listen to the, what Tom thinks the reason was. We saw this movie before. We saw this movie back in the late 1970s when every country in the world was moving to harden the airplane cockpit doors and the United States said, eh, nah. Because the airlines said we don't want to do it. There was actually legislation proposed. Might have been in the 80s, but it was back during that era when, you know, right after all that spate of hijackings to Cuba and whatnot. Let's harden our cockpit, door, cockpit doors. I mean, you know, El Al was the founder of this technology, essentially. But it moved to all of the airlines in Europe. It, you know, pretty much anybody who flew to Israel figured it out really early on. But by the 80s, it was, it was ubiquitous, except in the United States. Why? Because a hardened cockpit door is another 100 grand on an airplane. And the airlines didn't want to pay for it. And, that, and thus we got 9-11. So and thus we got 9-11 because we didn't have hardened cockpit doors, reinforced cockpit doors in the airplanes because uh, 19 hijackers <laughs> took over the airplanes in the most restricted airspace on the planet and flew uh, planes into buildings. And then they claimed that uh, they hadn't, Imagine a scenario where planes had been fl would be flown into the buildings, but that, that, that that's a lie. The, 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 the architects who designed the buildings had had thought of that. <laughs> what if planes fly into this building? And then you got Building Seven that came down. No plane hit it. It just had some f furniture fire furniture fire in the f first floor or something, and that 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 came down. So, so Tom's a supporter of the 911 official story of. Uh, government story of 911 and that's not a progressive viewpoint i don't think that's not a progressive viewpoint that's a mainstream viewpoint that's what you would hear on msnbc and cnn they would say that yeah it was the 19 hijackers okay 
but I just don't expect to hear it. I don't want to hear it on KPFK. I want to hear something else, something deeper than the government line of news, okay? And if you, if you don't know that the government will lie to you, then you don't know anything, all right? Sorry to put it like that. Shall I put it like that? I want to read a short news article that I found from The Guardian about KPFK. I was, look, I was looking for information about KPFK and about the backstory, you know, what goes on, what goes on behind the scenes. And this is the latest one I could find in, from The Guardian, uh, September 2015, by Rory, Rory Carroll uh, <clears throat> from The Guardian again. <clears throat> this is the end. Left-wing Pacifica radio affiliates enter protracted death spiral. And for as long as I've been listening to the station, they've always, they're always on the verge of bankruptcy. And it, there's a weird animosity among the programmers as well, like especially Ian Masters. I've heard him over the years. He, you know, because I, I, hey, man, I'm hardcore. I listen to the fun drives. I listen straight through the fun drives, dude. I'm hardcore. I like to hear the, I like to hear the, the banter <clears throat> in between the uh, Alan Minsky, the program, former uh, program director, I like to hear that banter, just talking about politics and stuff. And it comes out sometimes that, that, that they don't get, Ian doesn't get along with everyone. So this is the end. Left-wing Pacifica radio affiliates enter protracted death spiral. Veteran broadcasters accuse the board of promoting bizarre conspiracy theories as network puts pressure on staff to reduce their hours and pay. Feuding and ide ideological extremism have driven some of the U.S., S's flagship left-wing radio stations to the brink of collapse, according to two veteran broadcasters, <clears throat> Ian Masters and Sonali Kohatkar, hosts of the Los Angeles-based KPFK, said its parent network, Pacifica Radio, the country's oldest public radio network, network, was putting pressure on staff to reduce their hours and pay, leave or work for free, alienating listeners and approaching a point of no return. This is the end. They're running out of road, Masters told The Guardian. He accused managers and board members of promoting conspiracy theories, including those related to the truth and about 911. Yeah, we don't want to get to the truth. Yeah, yeah we don't want to get to the truth about 911. Jeez, we don't, want, we don't want that. And claims about cancer and HIV. They've run this place into the ground. What a, what a, what a, what a tool. What a fucking tool you are, Ian. Kohat Kart. <clears throat> Tell that to, go tell that to the 911 families, the first responder families who watch their, their uh, loved ones die slowly from cancer. Kohatkar, who hosts a daily show called Uprising, it used to be called Uprising, now it's Rising Up, because there was a thing, I don't know what happened. Again, we don't know. There's no, they don't tell us, they don't tell us, and uh, <clears throat> we're just left to guess what's going on. And uh, if... If they can't tell us the truth about why Jerry's leaving the station, if we got two investigative journalists, two top-notch investigative journalists there, Greg Pallas and, 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 and Jerry Quickly, they want us to believe, and they can't tell us the truth about why Jerry's leaving the station, they can't swing that, they can't, they can't, they can't make that happen, why should we believe anything they say about anything else? <clears throat> Excuse me. Kohat Carr, who hosts a daily show called Uprising, accused KPFK of betraying its progressive heritage and violating a union agreement by replacing paid employees with volunteers. It's Walmart Walmartization. It's up to listeners to save this network from ruin, Kohat Carr said. The allegations were the latest convulsion in a simmering crisis at Pacifica Radio. Like, it's always been a simmering crisis, for as long as I even remember the past, about the past 20 years, a network of five independently operated listener-supported radio stations, including New York's WBAI, which are known for liberal views or progressive views. Founded in 1946 by conscientious objectors from the Second World War, the network was an influential outlet for beat poets, Bob Dylan, and Vietnam War protesters, but has in recent times suffered from dwindling ratings, infighting, and financial hemorrhage. <clears throat> The network's, big, the network's biggest star, Amy Goodman, not bigger than Jerry. Jerry's got the most listened to show on KPFK, They said, uh, Greg told us, didn't he? The network's biggest star, Amy Goodman, host of the independently produced Democracy Now!, is also its biggest creditor. 
she is owed an estimated $2.1 million in unpaid broadcast fees. Check that out. Amy Goodman's a freaking millionaire. And that show, Democracy Now!, was a, it was a, a station show. I think she, she co-opted it for herself in some swift, you know, real cavalier moves that she did. I, I'm not sure of the whole story, but that's, I hear things like that. I hear things like that. And also that she's funded by Ford, which is why she can't talk about things like geoengineering and that's currently going on. She, she had a recent uh, show about, oh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, do you think we should start geoengineering? She, she's willing to go that far, but she's not willing to talk about the ongoing geoengineering operations, the uh, provable, verified, uh, <clears throat> documented uh, geoengineering operations that are going on. And you can find out more information about that at geoengineeringwatch.org. Dane Wigington's site, <clears throat> and from all, everything I can tell, the dude's up and up. The dude's, he, all he's trying to do is get out uh, the information. He's not selling t-shirts, he's not selling coffee mugs, he's not charging th fees to get into his talks and lectures. He's not selling anything. He's not selling books. He's not selling nothing. He's giving away everything. And uh, that's one of the things I like about Dane Wigington at geoengineeringwatch.org. Observers trace the travails, <clears throat> excuse me, Observers traced the travails to 2001 when a group of rebellious listeners and broadcasters took control and instituted an elaborate governance, governance structure of multiple boards, subcommittees, and painstaking elections, like they're going through right now. The result, according to Matthew Lazar, author of the 2005 book, Uneasy Listening, Pacifica Radio Civil War, ooh, i got to check that out, was continuous feuding between rival factions. In a Nation article earlier this year, this is from 2015, this article, he compared the network to the late Ottoman Empire of public broadcasting and urged progressive outsiders to step in and save it before it was too late. Kolhatkar, who executive produces and hosts her daily show, said the fantasy of utopian democratic decision-making was killing the network. We are reaching the point of death by democracy. Mounting debt and dwindling membership has left stations close to bankruptcy. Yet a station where there is a high turnover of staff and acrimony between factions Masters claims board members focus on purging perceived ideological foes and installing friends. Occasionally, you get decent people on these boards, I think Masters says. But they quickly get driven out because of the insanity. Masters, an Australian-American who hosts the syndicated show Background Briefing, <coughs> check his paper, somebody, said a conspiracy quackery faction focused on New Age hucksterism and conspiracies about 911. We don't want any conspiracies. We don't want to talk about any conspiracies because there's never been any conspiracies in American history. That's because if, it, if, if it's a conspiracy theory, that means that there would be a conspiracy. You know, you're, you're talking about conspiracy theories, right? That was a, a term invented by the CIA. I, I'm sure Ian's on the CIA's payroll. And Tom Hartman. And it, look, it looks like Sonali, too, with her little vaccine story that she did. <clears throat> Faction focused on new age hucksterism. You mean like alternative health care? <laughs> you mean like natural health care? Is that what you mean, Ian? A anything other than he can't, he doesn't support anything other than chemotherapy for cancer, right? Uh, and so called chemtrails. Well, yeah, chemtrails is a, is, a, is a meaningless term. It's geoengineering, it's solar radiation management, it's stratospheric aerosol injection, it's marine cloud layer brightening, okay? These are scientific terms that you can look up. Was in a perpetual battle with a wannabe revolutionary faction. They've turned radio into a political bleat, bleat, bleat club. Bleat club. That may be an Australian word. Bleat, B-L-E-A-T. Bleat club for some Americans on the far left who think that what goes on there in their meetings is more important than what goes out on the air. Masters and Cole Hotcar spoke. I heard one, somebody, Ian said somebody, they referred to him as NPR light. I remember that. I heard that years and years ago. And it's, it has it stuck with me all this time, and it's, it's coming true. He is, his, the views that Ian pushes on his show, Jerry pushes on his show, uh, are, you could hear it on MSNBC and CNN. It's, they're no different. They're identical. They're identical. Spoke out in the wake of, the Masters and Kohatkar spoke out in the wake of a recent announcement by KPF's case general manager, Leslie Radford, that to save money, three staffers would be laid off and that remaining salaried staff would have their hours and pay cut by half. I've been in the 
put in a position where I volunteer for my own job or get taken off the air, said Kohat Kar. It was an attempt to purge staff without paying severance, said the presenter. The Pacifica Foundation, which is based in Berkeley, California, did not respond to requests for comment, nor did Radford. And I reaffirmed in a recent eulogy for a deceased, deceased colleague, she reaffirmed her commitment to political activism. KPFK and I stand ready for the revolution. Goodman was also conveniently unavailable for comment. <clears throat> Again, we don't, we, you, there's nobody willing to talk honestly uh, about what's going on at the station. I mean, so why, how can we believe anything else they say about anything else? They can't get their own house in order. They can't keep things on their own house uh, organized and, 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 and running properly. So how can they, how can they be a, a reliable source of news, man? Just, I'm just asking questions. I'm just trying to understand like, like all you other listeners out there. Goodman was unavailable for comment, conveniently. She's a millionaire. She's a freaking millionaire. <clears throat> Pacific, I do listen to Democracy Now. It's one of the few places you can get, I mean, some semblance of uh, progressive news that challenges the corporate mainstream perspectives, but she's, she's, she's not, you know, there's something funny going on there too with her. Pacifica's radio stations hover near the bottom of Nielsen ratings. Here we go. Jerry's got the most, when Greg tells us, Jerry's got the most popular show on KPFK. I, don't, I can't understand why they would get it off there. Why would they get it off? Well, she, so she, uh, Jerry's more popular than Amy Goodman, Greg? Huh? Is that what you mean? Or maybe you mean like just shows that are produced at the station, KPFK, right? Because Amy's out of New York and she produces her own show. So you, do you mean uh, shows produced at the station? Okay. And so here where we get to the meat of that, the, the truth behind Greg's statement that Jerry's got the most popular radio show at the station. That sounds really good, doesn't it? But let's take a deeper look into what, what, he re what he's really saying. Okay, the most popular, more popular than what? Okay, uh, Pacific radio stations hover near the bottom of Nielsen ratings. WBAI calls itself radio for the 99%, but it's lucky to be heard by 0.1% of the New York radio audience. The New York Times reported in 2013 when the station laid off 19 of its 29 employees. The LA Weekly reported last year that during an average 15-minute period, just 700 people listen to KPFK. Let me say that again. The LA, Re LA Weekly reported last year, that, so this would be 2014, because this article is from 2015. So the LA Re Weekly reported that in 2014, that during an average 15-minute period, just 700 people listened to KPFK for at least five minutes versus 8,000 and 20,000, respectively, for LA's other public radio stations, KCRW and KPCC. Okay, so 700 people, all right, are listening during a 15-minute, for at least five minutes, okay? During an average 15-minute period, just 700 people listen to KPFK for at least five minutes. <laughs> Okay, so that's near the bottom, okay? So when you say Jerry's got the most popular radio show on KPFK, you're not really saying a whole lot, okay? If so he's got 700 listeners <clears throat> at any given moment that listen for five minutes or longer. Maybe Jerry gets, pushes it up to 1,000, maybe, maybe. We don't know, really. They, they're not going to – you've got to be a subscriber to get the Arbitron ratings, I think. I've looked for them. But that's Greg just blowing more smoke up your ass. Uh, Masters said a station that once competed with the national public radio affiliates had frittered away its credibility with ultra left wing rants, discount versions of Radio Havana, plus marketing of quack medical remedies such as curing cancer with baking soda. Yeah, there's no natural cures for any ailments that we have, Ian. There's no simple natural cures for our ailments. We all, we all got to go to CVS, man. We all got to go to the AMA doctor to, at the medical plan. We got to get a prescription. We got to get on the drug. Got to get on the drugs, man. Got to get on those prescription drugs, Ian, don't we? There's no natural cures for anything in this world, is there? And it's all quackery. And 911 
was 19 terrorists from Saudi Arabia. Right? Master said a station that once competed with natural, national public radio affiliates has frittered away its credibility. Just meant that. Curing cancer with baking soda and dietary supplements which supposedly cure AIDS. Promotions for things like vitamins and homeopathic cures that blur the difference between ads and journalism. And endless fundraisers. Masters has set up a website detailing some of his, alleg detailing some of his allegations and, and is considering petitioning state charity regulators to investigate. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Who's watching these guys? I'm just watching them from the news journalist's point of view. I'm not looking into the money. You know, I don't have, I'm not qualified to do that. I don't have time to do that. I barely have time to do this. Uh, he is also considering appealing to the Federal Communications Commission. What a rat. <laughs> what a rat. What a little rat he is, Ian Masters. The rat. He's going to run off and tattletale. He's going to go tell, tattletale. I'm going to go tell. I'm telling. I'm going to go, he's a little rat. I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe that's who needs to look into it. But he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just great, man. He great. <clears throat> Masters has set up a website. He set up a website. Oh, boy. He's considering appealing to the Federal Communications Commission to challenge Pacifica's license, licenses, a move which would entail seeking whistleblower protection. Huh. Hmm. Lazar, the author, said the question now was not whether the Pacifica Foundation will survive, but whether survival was the best option for the U.S.'s growing network of community radio stations. Pacifica has a long history of providing affordable radio programming to community-based signals. But if the organization can't effectively administrate its five radio stations, maybe it's time to look at transferring those licenses to independent nonprofits, then giving responsibility for network building to a new foundation not mired in inner Nicene chaos. <clears throat> Leslie Radford, KPFK's general manager in 2015, defended the station, saying it promoted diverse views and was taking necessary steps to survive a financial squeeze. We do, she continues, we do, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have radical left views and 911 truth of shows and your traditional progressive left. I don't think we do any better by having a monolithic political voice. You come here to be surprised, intrigued, and to disagree. You don't make good public affairs radio by having everyone agree with you. I totally agree. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. But these views should be, should be challenging the corporate media perspectives, not in lockstep with them. Uh, Leslie, is that her name? <clears throat> this shouldn't be in lockstep with corporate uh, news media perspectives. She blamed the U.S. recession and uneven recovery for shriveling listener donations. The fundraising model is not working for us at this point. My guess is that people are not responding because they didn't have 25 to 100 to give. It's simply the economics of the day. Promoting controversial health remedies helped keep the station afloat, said Radford. They're the most popular premiums. People respond more to them than offers of films. Radford said the halving of hours and pay applied only to full-time employees, including managers such as herself, and that the plan was to return to normal pay and hours in a few months. That's the latest uh, mainstream Guardian. That's the main, latest information I could find about KPFK and what the fuck is going on there. This is from the Guardian again, 2015, September. <clears throat> September 10th, 2015, by Rory, Rory Carroll on Twitter at Rory, Rory Carroll72. Rory. <laughs> Rory! Rory! Say that ten times. Rory! Practice that. So there you have it. You know, the truth behind the truth. <clears throat> when Greg says, oh, Jerry, you've got the most popular show on the station. I can't, I don't understand why they're why this is happening, but they claim it's because of funding. Check, let's check that out. Um, pound that night, uh, not knowing if I was getting out or not. I mean, uh, you know, and, and so this is the stuff you get and that you've gotten on. Check one, two, check one, two. Again, I'm MZ. You're listening to Who's the Savage Now? This is KPFK Watch and uh, KPFK Watch on Who's the Savage Now? Uh, uh, a channel, a uh, station, a show dedicated to handcrafted animal rights advocacy, music, and what else? What else? Vegan cuisine, hard-hitting commentary, something like that. Yeah. And we're coming to you live and direct from the poor man's beachfront condo here on the edge of a continent from a formerly undisclosed seaside location not, not far from the megaopolis known as Los Angeles, California. And we're talking about Jerry Quickly's 
uh, departure from KPFK. His last show was last it was yesterday, January fourth, twenty eighteen. Today is uh, January fifth, twenty eighteen, and we're I'm just reviewing the show. Greg Palast was uh, sitting in with uh, Jerry and did a real, real embarrassing, pathetic uh, defense of Jerry and uh, tried to tell people that he was going to be podcasting soon on SoundCloud and they're going to do everything he can to get Jerry back on and, and he's got his own found, the, the fa- Palace Foundation for Investigative Journalism. I don't know what the hell that has to do with anything. <laughs> what are they going to do? Investigate the dare firing of Jerry quickly? Get on it. Get on it, Greg. Get on it. it <clears throat> but again, if this is tr- if this is what they're saying is not true, then shame on these guys. Shame on Greg Palast, investigative journalist extraordinaire. We're, we're led to believe, if they can't be honest with us about why Jerry is leaving the station, then how can I believe anything that he says ever? Okay, and I don't believe what I don't believe what they're saying is true. I don't believe Jerry's leaving because it's a, a, a lack of resources, lack of financial resources at the station. By who? By Jerry? Who's, who's financial resources? Again, he's just so vague, it's hard to pin down what is actually happening. And they're conflating, they're obfuscating, and that's, that's not good for investigative journalism. That's not good for investigative journalism. Here's a little more of uh, Greg with Jerry yesterday on Friday's show. This is happening. And again, I want to remind people, this is Greg Powell, this is a guest. Um, this is the last show for This Is Happening. Two years of Jerry Quickly. It's been astonishing. You hear guests that you like that, uh, that you've just heard, and, and more than more than we can name. Extraordinary. And by the way, if you want to pick up some of the guests, you, there's nothing wrong with going back through these programs and picking up the ones you've missed. I mean, the, the guests are astonishing, except for me, Greg Powell, and I just kind of, I'm mediocre. But I'm going to... Yeah, you are mediocre, Greg, because you're not giving us the whole story, man. You're not telling it true. You're not telling us like it is. You're not keeping it real, okay? You're bumbling. You're bumbling. You can't even give out a uh, SoundCloud. You can't even give out Jerry's Twitter account handle correctly. You're bumbling, Greg. It's not, you don't look reliable. You look like a bumbling fool. You sound like a bumbling idiot. You don't sound like a top-notch New York Times best-selling investigative journalist asking Jerry what his Twitter handle is. You just don't. You don't. You already know that, Greg. Before the show starts, if you want to be believed, I don't believe that you. I don't believe what you're telling me, Greg. Try sell it somewhere else. Go to SoundCloud. Go to YouTube. Sell it over there, buddy. Am I angry? Do I sound angry? You used to know how to work this thing. And, you know, um, I certainly wouldn't want to have been in that compound that night, uh, not knowing if I was getting off. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. (laughs) Anything out of turn there, he's got, if you don't pick up his hip-hop album with with Bus Driver, you've missed something absolutely stunning and extraordinary and a great poet and on and on and on. (laughs) You wonder when you look at what Jerry quickly has done. You wonder what you've done with your life. <laughs> I feel, you know, like, like gee, I've been... Really, Greg? Really? That's what you wonder? Just goofing off. The same so. thing we do every night, Pinky. <laughs> and so, anyway, I do want you to know, I do want you to know that, that Jerry is not forgetting you. Get him at, at Jerry quickly. This is the final... Uh... That's at Jerry quickly on Twitter, Greg. Can you... He's bumbling. He's bumbling. Stumbling. Conflating obfuscating, bumbling. Of this series of This Is Happening, and we don't know if we'll be seeing you again over the horizon, but we're... More we don't know. <clears throat> More we don't know. Sounds a lot like the Russiagate coverage. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. That's not good for an investigative journalist. You should know, buddy. We're going to be trying. We're going to be working on this. Yeah, we're working on it. Well, hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit of fundraising, and that will... We're working on it. We're working on it. What a bunch of crap. What a non-specific, vague, platitude-type uh, excuse. I mean, this isn't radio. This is, they're not telling us anything. We're working on it. Go to Twitter. Go to SoundCloud. What's it? There's nothing at Twitter. There's nothing there. I've been there. 
I, Jerry blocked me and then unblocked me. I, I used to think, imagine Jerry was having all these uh, great online conversations. He, he used to say, let's continue the conversation online. There's nobody there. There's no conversations, man. Check it out for yourself. SoundCloud, YouTube, nothing. Nada. Zilch. Stop lying. What, is, what do you mean go to SoundCloud, go to Twitter? What's going to happen there? Nothing. There's nothing there, Greg. Fucking liar. We'll allow um, shows like This Is Happening to continue to flourish. And there is nothing like Also it. help other programs uh, um, doing the same because at the end of the day. What other programs, Jerry? You claim you don't know Ian Masters. You claim you told a listener you don't know Ian Masters. And then the next day you said you didn't know what, what listener asked you about that. And you said you didn't know what he was talking about. So what other shows, Jerry, are you going to help? What, one, what, name one programmer standing up for you. Name one programmer from KPFK standing up for you right now as you're heading out the door. Fired. Not because of a lack of resources. You got fired. This is happening. It's just a, it's a part of Pacific. It's a part of alternative. No, it's not. There are many, many. Um, no, it's not. Not anymore. Not anymore, Jerry. You lying at you lying motherfucker. It's not a part of KPFK anymore. Check the archives. Today, fr your Friday show was special programming. Important and critical voices, and I hope that uh, that we will be able to do success successfully fundraise so that we'll be able um, to continue uh, to uh, bring you a, a, a show that uh, is a, um, is astonishing. A, a place of significant importance in my, in my life and. What is, what is he saying? We hope that we will be able to continue to fundraise so that we can bring you shows. What are you, what, where are you going to fundraise, Jerry? You're going you're gonna to continue to fundraise for KPFK? What? You're, you're, they're stumbling, bumbling. They sound like idiots. They sound like clowns. They sound like news clowns right now. Because they're not, they're not, they're just, it's white noise. They're not saying anything. And, um, and I hope it's been And there's been a lot of support. And by the way, I want to thank all the listeners, too, because I was just looking at something they call the Cumes, that is, the, the Nielsen ratings. Here we go. Here we go. Let's look at the ratings. Yeah, let's look at the ratings, Greg. And this is the most popular of KPFK's programs in the afternoon and evening. There's nothing because people are excited. In the afternoons and evenings. Okay, well, what, what's he competing against? What's he going up against? John Wiener? John Wiener, what's he, what, who else, what's he going up against? I mean, what's his competition? What's his competition? By what you hear on This Is Happening with Jerry Quickly. He's not dissolving. He's not going away. Check out what's going to be happening. Again, he could be the most popular or the least popular. It doesn't matter. His behavior is unprofessional, Greg. Inciting violence is unprofessional. It's and against the goes against the mission statement of Pacifica and KPFK. Okay, it goes. It's it's just unprofessional, and uh, he needs to go. Happening where you can find his extraordinary analysis programs, guests, music, operas, hip hop, uh, poetry. Yeah, go check out his poetry on YouTube. Just put in um, if you want to find my videos on Jerry, Jerry, Jerry O, Jerry O. If you want to find my videos that I made on Jerry, again, I didn't do this. I'm not. This is just. I just got so pissed off at Jerry and the station. This is a, the station man. This is the program director's job, not my job. I'm not a media analyst, media critic, but I know when people are uh, bullshitting me. I know when I'm being lied to. I know when somebody's uh, trying to pass off corporate media perspectives as alternative or progressive. And, I, and, and, and that's why I'm making these videos. And if you want to find my videos on Jerry real quickly, real, if you want to find my videos on Jerry quickly, very Jerry quickly, Go to just uh, go to YouTube and type in Jerry quickly. My videos will come up first or second right there. One of them will. And educate yourself about this issue. If you care about the station, if you care about truth and democracy and freedom. At Jerry quickly, that's vital to join. And the at Jerry occasionally I post pictures of the bonds. What? It's vital. At Jerry quickly is vital. What? <laughs> he doesn't say Twitter. At Jerry quickly on Twitter, Greg. Gary, Greg, he just sounds like your granddad that doesn't really know that social media exists, right? He doesn't really sound, he doesn't know where, how you get, how people plug, get it, uh, go to it. 
He just, he just keeps saying, at Jerry Quickly, at Jerry Quickly, but he doesn't say it's on Twitter. He doesn't say it's on Twitter. He just doesn't seem to know, be in the know about social media and how, how, you, how you get people to go there. I don't know. Does it, what does it seem like to you? As I, I work on <laughs> yes. That's my, my solo thing at home. <laughs> uh, we're taking your calls here, man. At 818 <laughs> So <clears throat> this is very sad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Jerry's last day at the station, he's just uh, lying, basically, and confusing, conflating, and obfuscating why he's leaving. And uh, that's really sad that he can't be honest with his listeners on his last day at the station. 5735, that's 818 985 KPFK. I'm Jerry Quickly. This is happening. Um, you know, right before we get the calls, I, I really want to play this, this Manafort clip. And uh, it- here's Jerry. Jerry's going to play a Manafort clip like like those uh, earlier in the show. I played a uh, Rachel Maddow clip and, uh, and, and Jerry quickly clip talking about Russia. And those were three months apart. And they were both st- still talking about Manafort. OK, Manafort. It's speculation journalism. It's not not stuff, not reporting, not stuff that happened, but stuff that may happen, might happen, could happen. Okay, that's 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 not news. That's gossip. Take it out. In this clip, uh, well, you don't actually get to hear from Manafort. And the reason you, I tried to talk to Manafort and get, and get the interview, but he was in jail. Uh, he was uh, busy styling on the Avant. When's the last time Jerry went out in the street and interviewed somebody? Or on a community? When's the last time Jerry uh, covered a community issue? <clears throat> like homelessness in L.A. Jerry's in L.A. When L.A. The homelessness is one of the biggest issues in L.A. right now, if if not the biggest. When 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 was Jerry's last story on homelessness in L.A.? Hmm? And his SoundCloud account is not up to date. There's it's not consecutive, and the last show was a month ago, about a month ago. That's posted up there. This show's not up there. It wasn't up there when I checked yesterday or this morning. Trump, no money on your books, jail attire line, and uh, and this was uh, and this was one of the takes that uh, we had here on this is happening on. Jerry can turn a phrase, and he's funny, and that's that's about all that can be said for him. He can turn, a, he knows how to turn a phrase, and he's funny, and he's he's charming and charismatic on the air, and he's a very likable guy, but he's not a journalist. He's not a journalist. Don't confuse that with journalism. Paul Manafort never getting out of jail again for the rest of his monkey ass life um paul manafort is going to jail he is not going to jail rather he is in jail and he will never see the outside of a prison he will always see the sky through bars or through a prison yard again th- this is just fantasy this is a fantasy of, that jerry has and this, he's passing it off as news or reporting or what what i don't know and and to say that this is challenging media Corporate media perspectives is, is a joke because this is exactly what Rachel Maddow does every night. If he has a view of the sky at all for the rest of his greedy life, F your $5,000 suits. F your house. F your couch. F your couch. They should have never given you Negro's money. Take your calls here, 818-985-5735. That's 818-985-K. There you have it, folks. I think this is about the end of this, the end of the line for this show. A little over an hour here, and uh, I just wanted to present some of the evidence that I have. And I guess it, Jerry, it, it is confirmed that Jerry was fired, or he's leaving the show. It's not clear. It's not clear. We haven't heard definitively why he's leaving the show. Uh, if we, if you believe Greg Palace and Jerry quickly, it's because of a lack of money or lack of resources. Jerry's got a huge team there, scholars and residents. He's got a legal team that he has to support, uh, producers. Uh, he's got uh, reporters that bring him stories, I guess. He's got a whole team of people that uh, just we just can't swing it, just can't swing it to keep him on the air. But I don't believe that. I don't believe that's the truth of the matter. And for Greg Palace to come on and to, to say that it's the truth is pretty compromising if you call yourself an investigative journalist. And let's look into that Palace Investigative Fund Foundation. Let's take, a, let's take a closer look into that, shall we? Until next time, I'm MZ, host of Who's the Savage Now? This has been KPFK Watch, dedicated to exposing on-air malfeasance at my local public radio stations like KPFK and KCRW.
Peace out.